hello there. Here we're going to look at how you can use a process known as rapid course development to help create an online course. When you're asked to develop a course online, don't panic. Many of us have done this before. And there's lots of helpful advice available to you, including this short video. You might also want to look at the Tips and Tools section of the Contact North portal. And the Pockets of Innovation section of that portal has lots of examples of new things people are doing to make courses more interesting. But let's be very practical here. Let's try and be helpful and direct. What you want to begin with is getting rid of some assumptions. Get rid of the idea that what you're trying to do is take what you're doing in a classroom and just move it online. It doesn't work. The second thing you want to do is to forget about PowerPoint as the vehicle for everything. I once went to a presentation that Bill Gates gave, and he made the phrase that I've used a lot since, power corrupts, but PowerPoint corrupts absolutely. So be careful. Don't make a lot of use of PowerPoint. Think about what it is you're trying to achieve. What does a successful student in this course look like? What do they have to learn? What do they have to be able to do? How should they be able to think and understand the key concepts and ideas of this course? Start at the beginning. What's most important for the student to learn, think, and do? If you start with that, we can make progress. Also, don't start with the textbook. Start with the learner. Think about the learners you have. What different kinds of students are going to be in this course? Think about how they will each learn differently. Start by making some notes for yourself about three things. What is it students need to learn? Who the students are? And what do you know works to get students who are struggling to learn the key concepts, skills, and knowledge they need to be successful in this course? Make some brief notes. And then, let's start to get systematic. There are some simple instructional design principles we want to use. The first is analyze. That's what I just asked you to think about. Analyze who the students are, what their routes to success will look like, what the learning outcomes have to be, and what resources you have, materials, video, text, audio, cartoons, newspaper cuttings, journal articles, anything. What are the resources you can bring to bear on this problem of making learning work? Think also, as you're analyzing, what activities you need to use to get students engaged. This is not a passive process. Learning is an active process. How are you going to make sure students are active in their learning online? So analyze what you have, who's going to study, and how they're going to do it. The second phase of instructional design is called design. We haven't developed anything yet. We're still thinking about it. Think here about the storyboard. What are you going to do to make it possible for this student, think of an ideal student, to learn? I always begin by thinking about week by week learning. I don't think about the course as a whole. I've already analyzed what they have to achieve. I'm now thinking about how I'm going to do it. I'm designing. So I think, what can a student do this week to be successful in learning what they need to know this week to be successful in the course? What does success look like week by week? I'll start by saying my objectives this week are, and then I will think about how I can hook the student in. How can I get them involved straight away? Is there a video? Is there a challenge? Is there an activity? Is there a piece of reading that's short and sharp but makes the point? I don't want to look at a textbook yet. I want to hook the student in. 
If I can do that, I can get the student involved. I also try and think of a couple of questions that will get them discussing something with other students in the course. And then I will get, direct them to the learning materials that they need to look at. It might be a chapter of a book. It might be a video. It might be a set of readings. I might send them on a web safari to get them to look at materials that they find and then share them with other students. But I'm looking for an active way of hooking the student in week by week by week. Each week I also want them to do a short quiz or some kind of activity which I can assess so I can see what progress they're making. I'm drawing all this out. I'm designing this week by week. I'm also thinking about different kinds of students. I know I'm going to have one or two who just get through this stuff because it's obvious to them. They're fast learners. They're fast tracking through this course. I know I'm also going to have students who plod through but do fine. And I'm going to have students who struggle. They may struggle with the language. They may struggle with the concepts. They may struggle translating concepts to skill. So I have to think about another issue, which is how do I help the students who are fast-tracking deepen their studies? What additional readings or resources can I make available to them as optional? But I have to think about remediation, about those students who are going to struggle. What do I give them? What support can I give the struggling student? I know, because I've taught this course lots and lots of times before, I know the areas that students are going to struggle in. So rather than be surprised every time, I should provide materials and resources that help the struggling students struggle less. Now, if I do that for every week of the course, think about the design components, the elements I want to have for the engagement of students that week. Think about the remedial work I might need that week. Think about the fast track work I need that week. Think about the variety of materials I need that week, video, audio, text, so that different kinds of learning styles are reflected in this course. Then I've actually designed the course, but I haven't developed it yet. And that's the next thing I need to do. Having laid out the stall, as it were, I now need to fill the weeks with work. So I'm now going to sit and design how all the jigsaw pieces of this course fit together. I'm going to build the course. And development takes time. You can't do this quickly. It has to be done well. I need to lay out my objectives. I need to connect all of the learning materials to the objectives. I need to create assessment activities. I need to do that work. In the design phase, I just outlined what my intentions were. But now I have to deliver on my intentions. And the last phase of instructional design is implementation. Ideally, we'd like to pilot a course before we actually launch it on the great unwashed public. But actually, we don't often get the chance to pilot. So the first group through is the pilot group. In the first graduate program I ever designed and developed, we had 65 students piloting live as graduate students the first cohort of the course. We learned a lot from them, and we are ever grateful for that contribution that they made. They got their degree. We got to know how to do it better. So the other thing you need to think about is what are you learning each time you teach a course that will help in the next generation of the course, in the redesign and redevelopment of the course? Some material will date quickly. Some material will date over time. But the design itself needs to be robust and be able to withstand all sorts of changes in the nature of knowledge and the nature of the learning process that you're engaged with. The design should stand the test of time. But you will need to revise it quite frequently as knowledge changes and emerges. So make sure you're flagging opportunities as you develop the course uh, for redesign. These are the things that we might need to change the next time we teach this course. 
Now, there are some things that can help you with the process of creating a course from scratch. The first is open education resources. When I first started developing courses, we had to buy material. But now there is so much material freely available online through a Commons license, through open resources, and there are catalogues of these resources available. Look at the Contact North website, the faculty portal, for tips and tools about using open education resources. There are online assessment tools. There's a short video describing what some of these assessment tools look like. There's tons of video resources. YouTube is a rich source of these, but so is iTunes University. Take a look at the iTunes University video library, which has over one billion video resources available from around the world in different languages. You can direct students to blogs. You can create your own blog, which connects students to recent developments that you're aware of that you want to share with students. This can be independent of the course. It can be keeping people up to date across a range of courses about developments in your field. And you can have a kind of help center that's also independent of the course and might relate to a number of courses that will help students who are struggling with key ideas. For example, there are statistics labs available. There are remedial labs and simulations in science that you can make use of. And there are similar things in social science and the arts. So don't feel that you're alone. Find other resources that can help you or create resources that cut across courses which will help students. Now, I hope this has been helpful. There are guides to rapid course development in the Contact North website. But take a look at what others are doing, too, to get ideas about new design, new elements of design, and new ways of teaching and learning online. Make good use of the online portal at the Contact North website. Thanks for your time. I'm Steve Murgatroyd for Contact North.